The reflections uh, are enjoyable to do. They're a very hard work. I reflected upon Christianity. How was it invented? When was it invented? Well, I figured out that most of the real work of the Christianity that we know is the work of the fourth century of the great uh, councils of Chalcedon and so forth. So therefore, I took it from a hostile point of view, from that of the Emperor Julian, who tries to stop Christianity. So through looking at it, this religion through his eyes, I'm able to illuminate for myself and perhaps for the reader, I reflect upon Christianity, and out of that comes a novel. With the trilogy, the American trilogy of Burr, 1876, Washington, D.C., I am reflecting on the United States. What is this country? Uh, is it anything new under the sun? Is it just another empire? What on earth is it about? American uh, history in our schools is taught like history in every state school. It is chauvinistic. I am sometimes criticized uh, for depicting in my books and plays a political scene uh, that is, how shall I put it, tactfully not blazing with light uh, as I describe the American political process. I remember Galbraith, the famous economist, saying he reviewed a book of mine called Washington, D.C., which he said he liked. But I met him afterwards, and Galbraith said, but American politics is really not as dirty as you portray it. And I said, come on, and told him a few stories that he should have known. Shortly thereafter, Richard Nixon proved to be a, a character from real life which not even my imagination could have conceived. But the Mafia uh, has always been uh, a sort of motif in American politics, at least in this century. I must say, looking out over the Tyrrhenian Sea, I think about many things. I think about Homer, nearby the Siren Islands of Ulysses, and I think about the Mafia, whose home we are visiting. And I think about my own experience with the Mafia I actually came in the United States in 1964, when I was the um, co-chairman of the Republicans for Senator Keating. This is when Senator Bobby Kennedy was running for office. And although I liked Jack Kennedy, I did not like Bobby Kennedy. So suddenly I had a phone call, and a mysterious voice said to me, you'd like to beat this man on the phone. I said, yes, we'd like to beat him. He said, uh, I have some information. So we met in a bar, a tall, swarthy Italian. They're always from New Jersey. And he said to me, there are two ways that we can defeat Kennedy. He said, one way is the following. And he showed me a document that Bobby Kennedy had been involved with an underage girl in Hyannis Port. And I said, well, I once wrote a play called The Best Man, which established the fact that sex should have no place in politics. And I said, I don't think that's very interesting. He said, I have something else for you. He said, I have a document which has been sealed by a judge, which means that it can never be printed or shown, in which Bobby Kennedy, as the Attorney General of the United States, went in to uh, a judge's chambers to a lady who was being sued, and part of this person suing her was going to establish that she had indeed had carnal knowledge of the President of the United States and of his brother, the Attorney General. And Bobby Kennedy said, all right, to the girl, he said, if you con continue with this suit, he said, I will see that you are deported from the United States. So the judge sealed the papers, the girl collapsed, the Attorney General went back, and I thought, well, although the sex is involved, I said, this is an interesting story of how to, how power is misused by a royal family. So I said, but I can't print this, I said to the man from the mafia, because it's, it's sealed by a judge, you go to jail. He said, well, he said, for $5,000, you can buy a little newspaper, you print it there, you eliminate the newspaper, the wire services take it out. And by then, I was halfway out the door, and that was my last contact with the Mafia. They play for keeps, and presumably, I later found out that he was in league with the late murdered Jimmy Hoffa. When 
Kennedy ran for president in 1960, I also ran for the House of Representatives at the same time. And I suppose I was more innocent about the political system. I thought it made some difference who the president was. In actual fact, the country is not governed by president. It's governed by people with names that you would not recognize if I said them. And that's one of the reasons why they're, why they're ruling. Presidents have a certain uh, ability to make mistakes, particularly in foreign affairs. And though I was very fond of uh, Jack Kennedy, in 1,000 days as president of the United States, the only th two things he accomplished. The first was an invasion of Cuba that failed, which was a very bad thing to have done. And the second was uh, starting up the Vietnam War, which Eisenhower had no intention of making hot. Kennedy loved war. He loved the Green Berets. I, I watched him once. He designed the insignia himself. I said, you realize that the last chief of state to design a uniform was Frederick the Great of Prussia. That's a good idea, he said, and went on designing uniforms. He loved war. I don't. And uh, so I think he must go down in history as a, a tragic failure. <laughs> The summer that uh, Jack Kennedy was the President of the United States, I went up to Hyannisport to see him and Jackie. And the three of us had dinner, and then we sat up fairly late talking about families, a subject of great interest to the Kennedys, certainly, and less interest to me. And Jackie and I have the same stepfather, Mr. Orkincross. My mother was his second wife, and her mother was his third wife. He is now dead. And Jack suddenly said, um, he read an interview that I'd given to a magazine, which was really about Jackie, not about me, but about our childhood. And I said, well, Marywood, the house that we were brought up in, I said, it was sort of like, uh, it was a golden season. I said, uh, I was telling him many lies. And uh, we were brought up and divorced from reality because our stepfather was a very rich man. And I went in the army at 17. I got out. Jackie and the others were younger and they stayed. So Jack said, what do you mean? What's this, all this golden stuff you're giving? He said it was the house of Atreus. I said, okay. So you don't want me to tell the truth, do you? I mean, after all, you're the president. I'm not. And he said, no, no, don't tell the truth. But he said, it wasn't like that at all, was it? Then he said something very interesting. He said, there are, here there are, there are seven of you, the children or the stepchildren of Mr. Orkincross. And I'm the oldest, and Jackie's the next. She's the third, actually. Uh, he said, how do you, every one of them is a disaster. And he named them all. He went through six and explained to Jackie and me why each one was a disaster. So he, but he left out two, Jackie who was sitting there and me. So we said, go on. He said, well, you know what I mean. And uh, he said, but what, what is it that went wrong? Because he was so full of his family. I said, I tell you what I think went wrong is this fact that each of us had a mother who married for money, and we knew it. And he was rather shocked by it. He, he said, you mean security? I said, no. I said, I meant money, and a lot of money. And Jackie said, yes, and nodded. And he was rather shaken by that. But I would say in a sense that a childhood over, over which hangs this terrible fact is... Uh, a childhood not like other people, and that it led Jackie to become this sort of um, the tragic empress of the West and a professional widow, and has led me to become a professional writer.